All right, in this second part of getting started with EDIUS version 7, we're going to take a, a little closer look at the presets and how we can customize these beyond that which comes by default from EDIUS. Now, one of the reasons why you might want to uh, use this customized setting is that, let's say you're starting a project where you don't have any presets that match the footage that you're working with. Let's say somebody hands you a project where all of the footage has been shot in PAL, and as you go through your presets, you see that oh, I just don't have any PAL settings to work with. Well, what you can do is choose something that's close, like this HD 1080 uh, that is at uh, 30 progressive. Select that preset, hit the Customize button, and hit OK. And here's where you'll have the opportunity to change the project preset from an NTSC setting to a PAL setting. And uh, you can do that, first of all, by going to Video Preset and uh, look through your options here and look for something that will match the footage that you were given. So let's say, for example, that all of the footage that you're working with comes to you uh, from a camera that shot in a, a PAL interlaced format. Well, as you go through your options here, what you want to do is look for a high definition setting, which is 1920 by 1080 usually, uh, and look for uh, 50i for interlaced. That would be the PAL setting for an interlaced project. If you know that uh, they were using a camera setting of uh, progressive, then you'll want to look for a setting that has the 25p. Let's go down here. Uh, here it is here. HD 1920 by 1080, 25p for progressive. So here's where you can make those kind of uh, customization settings. Uh, we're going to leave it at 29.97p for progressive. Here's where you could also change the audio presets. Now by default, um, EDIA sets you up with 48 uh, kilohertz with eight channels. Well, not too many of my projects need eight channels of audio, so I'm going to change that to a two-channel setting, 48. But you can go with whatever your, your camera shot at. If you're uh, working with a camera that shot in this surround sound uh, format and you want to work with that surround sound, then you might want to leave it at the eight channels. But uh, in most cases, uh, most professional cameras maybe only be shooting with two channels. Maybe some are four. Check your camera settings. Check the camera manual for uh, what most of the footage was shot at. I'll set mine to 48 uh, with two channels. We can uh, take a look at the advanced settings. All of my footage is at 1920 by 1080, uh, so we can leave it at that. The aspect ratio, we'll leave it 16 by 9. Frame rate will be fine with that. Progressive. We're okay with that. The video channels, uh, you know, most of these settings are fine. You could again at this point choose a 10-bit uh, setting if you prefer. We'll keep the stereoscopic editing off for now. And uh, sampling rate, we'll leave it 48. And well, everything else is fine. Now let's go over and take a look at the right-hand side. For reasons we won't get into at this point, um, I'm going to change this to 0%. We'll explain why in a later tutorial. The audio reference level, what this refers to is the, the level that your audio will be at if you create a bars and tone clip uh, using the EDIA software. So if your project is destined to broadcast use, uh, here is where you can set what level your tone will be at. And, uh, you might want to check with the broadcast station that you are working with to find out what their preference is. In NTSC, I believe that uh, most broadcast stations prefer it to be minus 12 dB, and so I'm going to set that there. Resampling method, we're going to leave at average, fast, and sharp. There will be times when we will instruct you of how it will work out better when you uh, change this to another setting, but uh, for editing the project and for most exports, we're going to leave at average, fast, and sharp. Time code, you don't have to worry too much about this these days in digital projects. We'll leave it at drop frame for now. 
Uh, that works out best if your project is headed to broadcast. If you're working, uh, if you're exporting mostly for internet, you could probably just go non-drop frame. Now, uh, for my purposes and for the purposes of these tutorials, we're going to set this up to have two video tracks and no VA tracks. If you're wondering what a VA track is, that uh, is an editing uh, preference that some editors like where the video and the audio uh, are resident together on the same track on your timeline. And uh, this really dates back to the early beginnings of EDIUS um, and uh, people kind of got used to doing it that way and some still like it that way and so the the Grass Valley people have chosen to continue that. I think they did a survey at one point to find out how many editors like that and you know, there was enough guys out there, enough guys and gals I should probably say, that like to have their audio together with their video on the same track that they have kept that option. But for the most part, in our tutorial series, we won't be working with video audio tracks. So at least as long as you're following along with our tutorials, you might want to set that to zero as well, as we won't be making any tutorials that have the VA tracks. The T tracks, what is that? Well, again, this kind of dates our program uh, and is something that has kind of a fallback to a previous era. The, it actually stands for a title track, and uh, it allows you the option to have a separate track that is only for graphics and titles. And once again, this is something that we probably won't deal with in our tutorials uh, because you can set your graphics and titles on any video track, and we don't see a real big need to have a separate title track. It just takes up a lot of room on your timeline and is, is something that we probably would never use or make any tutorials about. There are actually a couple of uh, effects that EDIUS has that uses, that is only possible to use on a title track. So at some point down the road, if you want to experiment with those effects that can only be used on a title track, by all means, go ahead and experiment with that, but we won't be referencing that in our tutorial. So I'm going to leave that at zero. And audio tracks, yeah, I'm not sure we need four to start out with, maybe three. Okay, and so with those settings selected, we can hit the OK button. Now, there's something that I'm actually a little bit curious about. In previous versions of, of EDIUS, uh, even if you made these customizations for any given preset and hit the OK button, while they might be remembered for this particular project that we're about to launch, the next time you go to uh, use that same preset, EDIUS didn't remember these customizations. And uh, so we have to really do another step in order to create presets that EDIUS remembers. We're going to check here in a minute to see if it actually remembers that now that we're at version 7. We'll see if they've included that option. But before we do that, uh, there is one more step that uh, we should have maybe even pointed out in our last tutorial. And that is once you have launched a project and you've started a project, there's one thing that you should really do before you close the program, and that is save it once. We see that our name is showing up here, Myanmar. But if we were to close the project right now, EDIUS would not remember that project the next time we launched it. You would have lost everything. And what has happened to some people when they first start working with EDIUS is that uh, they've forgotten this little step and have gone ahead and started working with the project and maybe have put a you know, half hour into the project and then something happens. Maybe their power goes out, or in a very unusual case, the program cr crashed. EDIUS is actually a very stable program, hardly ever crashes, but let's say it does. If they haven't made that one step of saving the program once, then EDIUS will never remember that program and will not start the process of the auto-save that EDIUS has. So what will happen is, after the crash or after the power outage, you go to take a look for your project, it's not there. EDIUS hasn't remembered it to start with, it hasn't done any auto saves, and so you have to start over. So be sure and remember every time you start a project, save it once, and then EDIUS will say, okay, 
they're serious. They want to start working with this project. We're going to start auto-saving. And that way, if you have a power outage or a crash an hour into your project, it's going to at least be able to be recovered from the last auto-save. So let's save this. Control S will do the job. And now, out of curiosity, I want to close this program and uh, uh, see if EDIA 7 remembers the changes that I made to that preset. Now, uh, the first time you go to close EDIUS, you are most likely going to go way up to the corner here, the right top-hand corner, and hit the close button. And uh, what's going to happen is that's only going to close that particular window, and EDIUS is still going to continue to run. That's actually our bin window, and in order to get that back, we can just hit this little icon here, so our bin window's back. In order to close a project in EDIUS, you actually no need to go to this window here, which we will call the Play Record window, and hit the little X button up there, and that's the button you need to do to close the project. You could also go up to File, uh, Exit, and that'll do the job as well, but if you want to use the X, this is the one that you want to hit. Okay, let's launch the program again, and see if EDIUS remembers the customization that we did to our setting. And uh, the way that we need to actually check that out is to actually uh, click on New Project to get our presets back. And the one that we customized was this one here. So let's select that and then also check the Customize button and open that up and see if it remembers the changes that we made. And as we look at it, we see that it is not remembering those changes. And so in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to set up customized presets that EDIUS will remember. Let's cancel out of this, cancel out of that, and go back and launch our program that we started and saved uh, a moment ago. And you can do that. It, uh, it selects the last saved project by default. So we can just hit the Open button, and it will open up our last project. And the way that we create customized settings that EDIUS will remember is to go up to our menu options here, select Settings, and choose System Settings. And the first time that you open up this little dialog box, um, this might actually be closed, and you'll be looking at just these uh, five options. But as you open these up, you'll see that there are a whole lot of other options that you can select from. And we'll probably spend a tutorial or two going through some of these options because it can really change the environment in which you edit. But the one that we want to take a look at for this tutorial is the Project Preset option. Let's select that. And you'll see that all of these presets that we created in our last tutorial are showing up in this window. And this might actually give you an option to delete some of the settings that you know that you'll never use that EDIUS created for us. For example, I no longer shoot or edit uh, in um, HDV. And so all of these settings that uh, come with the 1440 by 1080, we could get rid of those. So let's select uh, those. And uh, I rarely would edit a program in 720, so we can maybe get rid of those as well. And I don't really edit in 1280 by 1080. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this, and it might reduce our clutter when we start a project. So with all of those selected, let's hit the Delete. And now we're just left with three presets. However, since I know that all of these presets that Eddie has created for me are using... Uh, settings that I'm not comfortable with, uh, I'm going to delete all of these as well because I don't want to go in and have to customize every time I start a new project. So here we go. Let's delete all of these as well and create a new preset. Let's give this a name of uh, 1080 by 1920 and 30p. Most of my footage these days is coming from a DSLR camera, and since uh, most of my projects are destined to NTSC, that's where I have my camera set at for the most part, and uh, so that's what we'll work with. Here, uh, you can select an icon that might help you visually 
uh, see what that is uh, at first glance. And let's scroll down here, see if we can find an appropriate one. We could probably choose any one of these. It doesn't really matter which one we choose here. It's not going to really affect the uh, settings in any way. It's just a visual icon uh, clue that will help you quickly select a preset that you use uh, very often. Okay, now we can go in and select uh, an, a video preset that is going to work with that. And as we look through the various options here, uh, we see that EDIA 7 is now offering 4K, and I understand that it's very stable and uh, working well, so that's good news. I, I kind of actually hope to be able to uh, move into a 4K camera this year, so it'll be interesting to, to check that out and maybe even do some tutorials in the 4K environment. Uh, in addition, you also have some 2.5K settings, uh, which is uh, very interesting. But as we scroll down here, we uh, don't see any setting that allows you to choose a frame rate of 30p for progressive. And so we need to choose the next best option, and that is the 1920 by 1080 at 29.97p for progressive. For our audio preset, we're going to go once again with the two-channel option. Check out our advanced setting. Let's check the frame rate here and see if there's a 30 progressive. Well, what do you know? Here we go with our 30 uh, progressive frame rate. And since we know that uh, most all of our footage is at 30p, we're going to select that. We'll notice that when we change that over here, our option to select the drop frame changed. So what that tells me is that if you know that your project is going to be going to broadcast, you might want to leave that to uh, 29.97 and uh, keep the drop frame rate. What this means, it's not usually that critical if you're just doing a one minute spot um, for broadcast, but if you're doing a half hour program, your timing is not going to match up with broadcast timing unless you have set this to the drop frame and chosen the 29.97. Don't worry, Edius will make those conversions on the fly if you're using 30 progressive. Um, uh, this is, it's going to make it's going to drop the, uh, the frames in a way that you'll probably never notice. Okay, our field order is going to be progressive. We're going to leave it at 8-bit to believe that all of the rest of this is fine. Our render format. We're going to select the Grass Valley HQ Fine for uh, rendering, and that way anytime we need to render any particular footage, it's going to render it at a good high-quality HD uh, setting. If you wanted to, you could take a look at the details and make sure that it is selected for online fine. Okay, once again, we're going to change this to zero. Our tone, we're going to set to minus 12. Um, looks like we forgot to leave it at 30. Let's set that back. And uh, now we've lost our option for drop frame again. Don't worry about it. Unless you're making a half-hour program for broadcast. And so here's uh, where we can change this to be more our preference, and zero, and maybe three. And now when we hit OK, we have created a preset where when we hit OK now and close out our project and open it up again, now if we were to start a new project at this point, we just have the one preset in our list. And uh, when we check it out by hitting the Customize button and take a look at it, we'll see that all of the settings are just exactly how we want it. We're using a render format, HQ Fine. Our average area that we talked about uh, earlier is fast and sharp, just the way we want it. Our video tracks, every time we launch a new project, are going to show up exactly how we want it. And so uh, we are good to go. And you'll probably want to use this same method to create maybe four or five of your most used settings so that each time that you launch a new project, you will be able to work with presets that you have precisely designed and customized uh, to suit your particular needs. All right, well, I believe that does it for part two of getting started with EDIA 7, how to customize your presets in a way that Edius will remember.